G'day viewers, uh, welcome to another exciting adventure of do-it-yourself CNC. Um, yeah, well, what you're looking at there is a demo 5-axis uh, demo board. You usually set up something like that to work out all your motion controls first. Uh, call it what you want, motion control, kinematronics, kinematics. Uh, I, I just prefer motion control, it's less pretentious. But uh, we've got five uh, stepper motors there with the NEMA 23 and we've got four NEMA uh, 17s. This one here is a 400 pulse per revolution. This is 200, 200 and 200. This is a 0.9 of a degree per pulse and the rest of 1.8 degree per pulse so this is a higher resolution if you want to um, if you want to build something where you need that little bit of uh, finer movement uh, I'd suggest looking for something at uh, 400 pulses per revolution uh, 400 yeah 400 pulses per revolution the NEMA 23 is uh, 1.8 degree 200 pulses per revolution all this is very important and just take mental notes. Um, the little parallel board we've got there, I'll just see if we can. It's a Mac drive. That's the Mac drive BBC uh, parallel breakout board. It's a very capable board. Um, it's got PWM output, uh, it's got an electronic potentiometer or electronic wiper for uh, your VFD. Uh, I'm not using any of the inputs apart from that purple loop there is shorting out the uh, e-stop to enable it to function. If, the, if I was to cut that wire or break that circuit uh, the thing would go into emergency stop mode. A few other things to point out. It's If you're going to do uh, a demo board like this it, you want to, uh, you really should do something like this if you're in the process of building uh, your own CNC. You really need something like this to keep everything fairly tidy. You'll notice the different wires here. I've got a, uh, that's a shielded cable. The shield's not hooked up, obviously, on this little demo board. But um, then on this yellow looking one, uh, that's just heat shrink, keeping all the wires together. And this is how they normally come, just loose, crappy wires like this. Uh, these are probably the dirtiest signal generators in all the devices I've ever worked on. They, these pump up square waves and there's just filthy electromagnetic radiation spewing out of this and going all over the place. That's why I got the wires twisted here on the outputs to minimize any uh, interaction um, and if you notice here I've got two separate uh, brass terminal strips one's a negative one's a positive and the reason you do that is you do not daisy chain out of your uh, power supply into all these uh, uh, stepper drivers you never daisy chain there's too many problems they interfere with each other. Best to, uh, this is what they call a star topology, yeah, where you've got one wire coming in and you're just branching out from that all over the place to all the others. So I'll just give you a demo to show you at all it actually works. Uh, we've got the uh, Mac 3 6 axis um, interface. You're running Mac 3 on this. Or Mark, sorry, Mark Three. Sorry, that's just my uh, pronunciation. The way I was brought up. It's my language, my culture. So, hope you can understand it. But anyway, let's. Um, we'll go over here to the just to the keyboard. And I'll just show you. So that's the five axes. Now we'll do it over here. X, 
Y. Z or Z. Yeah, A. And B, the fifth axis. Yep, all functioning, all working. Now you see that little bracket? I made that little bracket uh, just out of a bit of 25mm uh, uh, aluminium angle brackets, one and a half mil thick, and I did some nice rounded corners and did a bit of engraving and cut out a, a round hole with a square, as you can see there. That's just uh, so I could mount this little bit of a circuit board there that I snapped out of an old torch, rechargeable torch, so I could use a plug-in power supply. If you notice, there's another power supply lead here. That's, a, that's an isolated uh, supply for the breakout board. Highly recommended by the manufacturers in the manual. Yeah, I read the manual. Uh, this breakout board, the Melamine chip board, uh, I made all that on the CNC, the Z40 or Z40. And uh, just showing you, if you look down here, can we focus on that? You see, I've, yeah, you can just see it. I engraved it that finely. I didn't even cut through the, the outer coating. So, uh, yeah, I had to go back and do it a bit more and make it a bit deeper. But that's the sort of precision you can do. You can actually get a bit of paper and cut a paper in half as it's laying flat on the, on your table. You could you could make your paper a lot thinner if you wanted to, you know, just as an exercise in um, precision machining. Quite often I'll just use a little thin bit of cardboard and uh, I'll go down through the material and into the cardboard and not even get anywhere close to the deck. But yeah, anyway, I thought I'd share that with you. How easy is, is that to wire up? You've uh, basically got 10 control wires, uh, step and direction for each axis. Then you've got your uh, power supply, another two wires, a, a ground, PC ground return on each of the output controls. Um, so what's that? That's 15, 25, and then plus another 20 motor wires, four, mo four wires to each motor. As you see, I've kept them all in the same colours. Um, a phase is green and black, and B phase is red and blue. Uh, it's not all the same on all the motors. You've got to check and verify your own uh, wiring, but I thought I'd give you a look. Uh, it's not too shabby. Of course, we could make it neater and tidier, but that would hide a, a lot of things. You wouldn't see it clearly. So... Um, yeah, everything's marked on the board, works well. And the next step would be to uh, take this configuration and build, a, build it into a small five-axis machine. And quite possibly, knowing the current dimensions of the world's smallest five-axis five machine, I could easily build one smaller and then somebody somewhere probably China or Japan, maybe Taiwan, one of those places, maybe they'd build one even smaller. Uh, I like the, the Japanese robotics, they're very, very good. Uh, Chinese is good, Taiwanese is good, but I think, I think the Japanese are right up there with the Germans uh, as far as quality and precision and micro-machining and all that sort of goes. But anyway, um, I thought I'd just give you a look and show you it actually works. And yeah, cheers and catch us next time.